It's October 29th, Wednesday evening, and that must mean that it is time for the weekly swing trading video. Hello, traders. We've had a nasty round of selling today. Let's get right into the markets and see what's happening here. We had this downward sloping trend line right here that was broken to the upside about a month ago. That led to an inverted head and shoulders formation with a breakout through the neckline that was very bullish about two weeks ago. We had these gaps higher that were true gaps where the low was higher than the prior day's high. Very, very strong formation. So it looked like the market was going to try and get to the all-time high. But we had a little bit of a pullback. Nothing too concerning right off the bat because this could have formed a bullish flag. So after a little bit of a pullback, I expected to see a rally up and through challenging that all-time high. That was one scenario that could have played out, but it didn't. The other scenario was that we would have a double top, lower high, and that this would actually lead to more selling. That's the scenario that played out. And the key bar for us was a week ago Monday. And you know this because I referenced it last week. We had this giant sell-off here, and I did a early exit on all of our bullish put spreads. I sent instructions out Monday evening and I advised you buy everything back for a break even. And in some cases we were able to close our spreads out for a slight profit. So we at least broke even on those or made some money on them. There was one trade open that we were not able to get out of and I said we're going to hang on to that one. We're going to try and continue to buy that spread back for a scratch. And we were able to do that yesterday. So I'm going to very quickly bring up the trade screen here. And we'll go into the staged order screen right here. And we can see that we had that CLX October 30th. So it would have expired this Friday. We were short the 212.50 put and long the 210 put. And we did that for a 45 cent credit. So we're trying to buy that back for 45 cents. So let's take a look at CLX and I'll show you why I like that and why I felt that we could stay in that trade. You can see how the stock last week came and made this low right here. It tested that horizontal support and the stock closed in the upper portion of its trading range. So almost a bullish hammer right there. That set us up for a nice move higher and the stock was able to get through the 50 day moving average yesterday. I'm gonna put up the chart from yesterday and in the chat room, everyone was posting that they were able to buy that spread back. And you can see that the stock actually made it as high as $217 with only three days left to go. The stock five points out of the money, we were able to buy that spread back. Good thing, because you can see how the stock since then has continued to falter. And today it's also had some weakness because of the overall market action but we were able to get out of that spread. That means that we only have one open position out of all of our open positions. We've worked really hard to get into a cash position, so we're not going to jump right back into the market, especially not after a heavy round of selling like we saw today. We can see that major moving averages were broken, and look at that gap down. Here was the tell today. Gap down, we didn't bounce at all. Instead, we took out the low and con continued to drift lower. And in the last few minutes of trading, when you would normally in the last half an hour after a big drop like this of 100 S&P points, you would normally see a little bit of a rally into the close. Didn't have that. We actually closed on the low of the day. So if we take a look at what major support levels are coming into play, we can see here that the 100-day moving average was tested today and it was breached today. So SPY 330 is going to be our new resistance level. You can see that big gap down also today. Now we also have some horizontal support coming into play right here around the 320 level. That I believe is going to be the next line of support. Just below that we have this upward sloping trend line here that comes into play at around 318. And then we have the 200 day moving average coming into play around the 312 level. So those are some major support levels that could be challenged. That's where I'm looking 
for some buying. Why the heck is the market going down like this? Well, let's go back. I want to try and educate you in all of this because it's critically important that you identify these key bars. I had mentioned to you right here, this is a very important period because it would either determine if we go lower or if we go higher. And so from this point on, this little bearish flag, we needed to see a nice long green candle getting through that high. If we would have seen that, then we would have another nice green candle. But this long red candle that we had a week ago Monday closing on the low, that was a major, major warning sign. And that's exactly what told me that the next big move was going to be on the downside. That's why we bought back our bullish put spreads aggressively. Now, last week, we also put a trade on, and that is not faring so well. So I'm going to take a look at that. What's the market going to do from here in, and why is it selling off so hard? We have a number of issues coming into play. In my opinion, the greatest issue that we had, and I started to see that last Monday, was it looked less and less likely that we would get a stimulus bill before the election. Nancy Pelosi, Steve Mnuchin, yes, we're talking, yes, we're talking, but the clock was ticking. And I knew that if we got into this week with the confirmation of Amy Coney Barrett, that Democrats would not be in a mood to negotiate a stimulus bill. And many of them are going to be returning to their home states to campaign ahead of the election. So if we didn't get a bill by last Friday, it certainly wasn't going to happen this week. Well, that stimulus bill or the prospect of it was keeping buyers engaged, especially as earnings season started to unfold. Typically, before mega cap tech stocks have announced earnings, the bid is usually very, very strong. Short sellers are very passive. And you combine that with the potential for a stimulus bill, and that's why the market was able to tread water. Well, as soon as you remove that stimulus bill safety net and you start saying, well, it's going to happen after the election. Well, great, but how long is it going to take us to know the outcome of the election? Is that going to happen on November 3rd? Probably not. There are an incredible amount of mail-in ballots to count this year. It could take at least two or three days to count through those. And Pennsylvania is a highly contested state. Yesterday, I heard the voting officials there say that they expect the results to be contested regardless of who wins the election. Well, that's going to add another week or two while they do the recounts. This could be very sloppy and very messy. During all of that uncertainty, we could see civil unrest. That's also not going to be good for the market. Typically, the market sells off into elections and after the election, on average, it's rallied 6%. And I believe that those statistics date back to the 1800s. It's 16 out of 18 times the market has rallied after the election results are known, and the average gain is 6%. The exception, there were two exceptions. One of them was in the year 2000 when Bush and Gore were in a deadlock and they had to count hanging chads in Florida. The market hated that uncertainty. And unfortunately, there's a pretty high likelihood that something like that is going to happen again this time around. So asset managers have been reducing risk. They've been selling stocks. And as I mentioned, without that safety net here, the selling pressure was going to overwhelm buyers. And then once we crack the 50-day moving average, Buyers pulled bids, and now we've got this little bit of a free fall right here. How low could the market go? I think that the 200-day moving average is going to be safe. I don't think we're going to get much below it. I think that if we do come down to that level, it's going to be short and brief, and then we will bounce off of it. But we could continue to float down, especially as the election unfolds. And if it looks a week from now like those results... Gosh, it's hard to even imagine a week from now we will have already voted and the results will be coming in. I personally am looking forward to all of the political ads and all of the political nonsense just going away for a while. It's probably not going to happen a week from now. It might take another month for that to happen, but I look forward to getting the markets back to normal. 
In any case, yes, the market could continue to drift lower, especially if those election results look like they're going to continue to drag on. Coronavirus is spreading. That means that many states are shutting down. They're in phase three. Some may go back to phase two. And that's going to hit Q4 results. Right now, we've got earnings coming out, and this was supposed to be a really good quarter. But on average, they're expecting profits to be down 20% in Q3. So that V-shaped recovery that we were pricing in is not happening from back here this summer. We had this gigantic rally that everything was going to be peaches and cream, and it was going to be wonderful. Let's go into the weekly chart. It'll be easier for us to see that. There's your weekly chart. We had this gigantic drop, and then there's your V-bottom. Only problem is we don't have a V-bottom economic recovery. We're not even close to it. With the resurgence of coronavirus, it looks like Q4 might be very, very sluggish as well. And here you can clearly see that double top that I referenced, and now the market actually pulling back and testing that support level. So the long and short of it is we've got some more pain and we've got some more work to do on the downside. The good news is that we're in cash and we will watch patiently from the sidelines. Instead of adjusting losing positions, we are going to be evaluating opportunities. We're going to be evaluating price action, and we will be ready to jump into action as soon as that support hits. If it happens during the week, if it happens not on a Wednesday night, if it happens on a Friday, it happens on a Tuesday, regardless of when it happens, you can expect videos and emails from me, and we will strike when the iron is hot. So don't worry that we don't have many positions on. We only have a GLD position on right now, and that's become a bit of a problem child for us. So we don't want to have anything on. We want to be able to sit back, watch the market come in, and then evaluate our opportunities. And this move is going to set us up with what I believe will be a really good opportunity heading into year end. Year end. If we get a two to two and a half trillion dollar stimulus package, we're going to see the market take off. If there's a vaccine that's distributed around Christmas time, which AstraZeneca has pretty much promised, then that also will start to improve everyone's psyche and we can start gradually getting our feet back on the ground. So let's take a look at the GLD trade and I'm going to put up the screenshot that I took because that has our instructions. So let's first focus on our instructions this week, and then we will take a look at GLD and those critical price levels. So here is the instruction. We have two positions on. GLD has broken the 100-day moving average, so we may need to take action. We are short the GLD November 20th, 176 puts and we're long to 171 puts and we did that for a dollar 20 credit last Wednesday. That's the spread that we're going to have to adjust. Now if GLD continues to drop, what we're going to do is we're going to buy this back right here. That is the November 176 put. We're going to buy it back in and we're going to hold the long 171 put. And as gold continues to come in, that put will go up in value, and I will send daily instructions on what to do and when to get out of that position. But we need to see follow-through selling. I need to know that this tick below the 100-day moving average on GLD was not a fluke. It was not a one-day event. I need to see some follow-through and some sustained selling in GLD. The other thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to close out our diagonal spread. So we are long the January 15th 186 call. We're going to need to sell that. And at the same time, we're going to need to buy back our November 20 190 call. So everything that we've done, you just need to reverse with the exception of the 171 put. We're going to leave that on. So let me read through the instructions here. Contingent on GLD below 170. 540. This is only for tomorrow, Thursday. I will replenish the instructions. I will send everyone an email Thursday evening so that you know what you need to do for Friday. 
we are going to buy back the November 20th 176 puts and we are going to close the diagonal spread. So we need to sell the Jan 186 calls and buy the November, whoops, that should be November 20th. We need to buy the November 20th 190 call. This will be a market order and we will hold the November 20th 171 puts. So that's what we're going to do exactly as I've described. If you don't understand what I'm saying right now, please watch this part of the video three or four times until you have a clear understanding of what we're going to be doing. So this is the key price point for Thursday. You can set an alert using Option Stalker by clicking on the chart or perhaps you have a mobile app with your brokerage firm where you can set this price point and have it tagged to GLD. So if GLD is below 175.40 tomorrow, Thursday, then you need to take action. We're going to be buying back our short put and we're going to be closing out the diagonal spread. So I'm going to remove this and we're going to take a look at that spread. GLD. And you can see one of the premises behind our trade was this 100 day moving average and the fact that it would hold up. There's where GLD finished today at 176.13. Still out of the money, but below our technical support level. Well, if GLD continues to have weakness and follow through, then this breach will gain momentum and it'll continue to drop. By buying back our short 176 put, the 171 put will continue to increase in value and we may be able to mitigate our losses. So this is legging out of a spread. Now, if GLD is able to pop back above the 100 day moving average, we're not going to take any action. We'll sit back. We'll see if it can recover and tick, tick, tick. Time premium decay is going to eat away at our November options. That would be our ideal situation. Now we do have a wedge formation here. So I'm going to click GTC. I'm going to click on that candle right there. I'm going to click on that candle there so that you can see uh, it's already through those points. But if you visually take a look at uh, GLD, you can see that wedge right here. So there's your wedge formation coming to apex here. And there's your breakdown below the lower end of the wedge and below the 100 day moving average. So if we do start to see some follow through selling in GLD, I feel perfectly fine being short GLD. Well, what happened? The market was down. How can gold go down? Isn't gold supposed to be safe? Doesn't gold go up when the market goes down? No, not at all. Gold is an asset. When the market sells off, gold typically sells off as well. That's because it is an asset. Let's say that you have people looking at all of their holdings. When they have a market drop like they did today, they're less likely to sell what took a beating and more likely to sell things that did not take a beating. So even though gold has held up relatively well, they're going to be selling gold. It's an asset, just like a stock, it's an asset. Now on a relative basis, Gold has a tendency to go down much slower than the S&P 500. And it has a tendency to recover much more quickly than the S&P 500. So it's more resilient, if you will, to market moves, but it does move with the market. So if the S&P 500 continues to drop, we can expect gold to continue to sell off as well. Now, gold is also considered the anti-dollar and the dollar rallied and that's why gold sold off so this is the dollar index it's an etf you can see this yourself it is uup is the symbol and here you can see that there is a nice defined downward sloping trend line and we will draw that in right here connect that high and in particular, this last stretch, you've got a couple of touches in here. So this is a very nice trend line. And you can see how the U.S. dollar performed relatively well today. 
By the way, coronavirus is not just spreading in the U.S. It's spreading wildly in Europe. Most of Europe is shut down. The major metropolitan areas are shut down. So it's not good on a global basis. Global economic activity is going to suffer because of this. So on a relative basis, the dollar was fairly strong today. It rallied above the 50-day moving average. That's a key technical support level. It's also above this long-term downward sloping trend line. So as the dollar moves higher, what happens to gold? It moves lower. On the U.S. dollar, you also have a double bottom higher low. That's also a pretty good sign. So on a longer term basis, I would say that the dollar is starting to strengthen. Well, what would cause it to strengthen? Not printing a bunch of money will cause the dollar to strengthen. So no stimulus bill, not a lot of dollars sloshing around. If we had gotten a stimulus bill last week or this week, we would have seen the dollar tank perhaps even to this level down in here, test that support level, and gold would have taken off. Now, I still believe that we are going to get a stimulus bill, but instead of having that stimulus bill in a week, we're probably going to have to wait a few weeks until the election results are known. But this will be, the stimulus bill will be the first matter of order for the new administration or the old one. Whoever wins the election... Trump wants to do a $2 trillion deal. Democrats want to do a $2.5 trillion deal. This should be a slam dunk once we get back through the election results. Now, the other thing that's coming up in December is we're also going to be hitting the debt ceiling. So that has to be negotiated as well. They'll probably put everything into one and try and negotiate a massive bill. I hope they don't because we need that stimulus bill now. And hopefully there won't be a bunch of sour grapes that they can get this through because the country really needs that stimulus bill. The market's counting on it. Workers are counting on it. Small businesses are counting on it. But that gives you an idea of what's in play right now. So the dollar rallying today is what caused gold to drop. And I do like this breakout. And I think that gold is, or excuse me, I think that the dollar is probably going to float higher until we see at least a certain timeline when we might get that stimulus bill. A lot of uncertainty right now. We don't want to have a lot of open positions. We've got GLD on right now. That is our only position. It may require some attention. We're going to let price action determine what we should be doing with the position. Right now, if I look at the dollar, if I look at gold breaching this 100-day moving average, I believe that we are going to be buying back the short leg of that put spread, and I believe we're going to be closing out the diagonal. If I'm wrong and we go back above 177, that's okay too, because every day that we can spend in here will be better and better. Ideally, we'd get to November 20th, all of our November options expire worthless, and then we get a nice cheap January call on GLD with the prospect of a stimulus bill, which I believe would be very bullish for gold. I don't have any new positions for you this week. You know, I, I'm not going to go through, I'm not going to run a bunch of searches. This is really intended to be a swing trading video. I believe that the best place to be right now is on the sidelines for swing traders. We've worked very, very hard to try and milk the last little bit of this SPY rally out. We had seven open positions in here when I thought that we would be okay until the election. And I was counting on a little bit of a bullish flag in here. And for those options to expire worthless last Friday and this Friday, it didn't happen. And as soon as I saw what the future direction of the market would be based on that key bar right there, I did not hesitate to reel in those bullish put spreads. So we are safely in cash. This drop is actually going to play into our favor because when the dust does settle, we're going to have a fantastic opportunity to get long. And I hope the dust settles in a week or two and that the election one way or the other is crystal clear and that there aren't a lot of recounts having to take place and that we're ready to 
get the country back on track, get the vaccines in, get the stimulus bill, and move forward. That's what I've got for you today. Let me put up the instructions for you one more time. Oh, let me review this. Why was that price point so key? Why did I say 175.40 on the SPY? That's because it was the low from today. Right there, that's the low from today. 175.44, we'll give it a little bit of room, extra room. That was a long tail under body too, so it wasn't there very long. If we get through SPY 175.40, take out that low, then we have to assume that gold is going to continue to move lower, that there will be follow through and sustained selling in GLD. But until that low is taken out, I want to stay in the position and see if we can get a nice little rally back up to 177. That's all we need to get back above that 100 day moving average. And then support will be back in play. So here are the instructions again. And I'll leave that slide up as I conclude the video. If you like this content, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Know that I post these on Wednesday evening. I don't release it to YouTube publicly for a few days because I want to give traders a chance to exit the trade, but I'm likely to release it tomorrow since there aren't any new trades and since this is really an adjustment to a open position, our only open position. Thanks so much, everybody. Good luck with your trading. If you're swing trading, stay in cash. If you're day trading, lots of good opportunities that we're nailing in the chat room every day. Good night. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.